Hello, everybody. Welcome to Presence of Mind, brought to you by KP and Cloud9. I am one of your wonderful hosts, Khalif Adams, and I'm joined this week and every other week with Greg Miller and Alana Pierce. How are you doing, both of you wonderful folks? How's everything going? Doing good. Doing good. I can't you know, wait. We made it through another day. in the sky. We did. Yeah, you're floating <laughs> in the sky as always, Alana. Great. Right? <laughs> Have a great time. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Excited to, to, to see you both here again, both in the sky and on the ground. We're, we're, we're both rocking it here on Twitch. Thank you, everybody, for coming through and hanging out. If you missed the last episode, we still got to speak to Annie Dro of the Cloud9 team uh, all about toxicity. And this week, we're going to be talking about trolling. Uh, which, of course, on April Fool's Day is the perfect conversation to have uh, when it comes to <laughs> conversations around things that you may not necessarily have thought of to discuss with your friends about the actual act of trolling on an April Fool's Day. Um, really quick before we jump into you know what we're doing here and the actual topic at hand. Are you both OK today with April Fool's Day? I know April Fool's Day is one of those things where people have very, very strong opinions about the day and the meaning and how things kind of work. Uh, Alana, what are your thoughts about April Fool's Day? I think I really liked it when I was a kid and it was stuff that you did with your friends and your family. Um, yeah. I've always found that very fun. But then when it became this corporate thing where every brand <laughs> felt that they had to get involved by like one upping the lie, it became a thing that was like, oh, we get it, you're trying to make money. And it just like kind of ruined some of it. <laughs> some of them get really creative and fun and the teams do cool stuff like the Garris body pillow today. I was like, okay, that's actually very, very fun, but also for purchase. So not actually, I wasn't tricked. <laughs> Hey man, um, and people want it, right? That's, yeah. <laughs> that's what, sometimes the fool is going to be things people they actually want. It. Yeah, and I think some of it is like there's some ways that it can be harmful. I think the um it it happened more last year, maybe less so this year. The routine of like straight people pretending to come out as gay it's mm. like things like that that they think are really funny that i think uh, are things that you know i don't really think that we should all be like well it's april first that's yeah. a good you're gay that's hilarious i think there's like some things that you know i don't feel like are appropriate but I, I do think there's a lot of fun you can have with it with friends and family for sure the internet is where everything gets sticky yeah yeah greg any any thoughts on april 1st on, on april fool's day I, I think it, April Fool's Day, I think, matters less and less the older you get, right? Right. For me, yeah, every every time it rolls around, I'm just like, Aren't, isn't this played out? But then you have to remember that, like, it's always going to be somebody's first one. Because, like, like I, not first April Fool's, but the first time you got got really well, right? Yeah. And I always go back to the IG and Zelda movie trailer, right? Yeah. Like, that they drop. And that was, like, that was a different time of what we we're expecting out of the internet, which sounds crazy now, but we're all fossils, so we remember it. Yeah. And now you get to that point where there's always one that will get me because I'm not paying attention. We're mm -hmm. all dealing with our lives. There's a million other things going on. And some headline comes across usually on March 31st, which isn't even April Fool's Day. And you're like, oh, my God. Oh, and then you get into you're like, oh, it's April. Oh, this is going to be an entire day of this. And yeah. there are the ones that are good, that are funny, that are cute. But then there's just so many where you're like, all right, like this just doesn't work for anybody as an audience. Yeah. I think the volume of it is where the problem came through. It was like some people doing it was fun. And then when it's just everyone and it's your whole timeline, especially in a, at a point in time where there's so much misinformation anyway, yep. it's, it's just like, wow, I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. You're just like, I don't really, my brain is already broken most of the time. I really yeah. don't need anyone else doing it and getting paid for it uh, <laughs> while, while they wind up doing it in that way. So again, again, thank you everybody for being here. And if you, again, if you haven't checked out the previous shows, this is all about mental health and well-being. You know, we want to encourage teens to and young adults to kind of prioritize their mental health and and, and give them some positive mental conversations and images and, and messages so that they will be able to kind of build more empathy and, and reduce stigma around all the things that we kind of see in the online spaces. So um, it, it's fun to be able to do this. And and this week, this episode, episode two, being around trolling is going to be really interesting because as three folks on the internet a, a lot. Uh, having done this work for a fair amount of time, I'm sure we've all absolutely have both been a part of trolling, have engaged in trolling, have been the troll and the trolley uh, in, in multiple parts of the equation. Um, I'm curious to hear your thoughts about, you know, how you've kind of come around on trolling, your kind of general thoughts about the practice and you know, how have you kind of managed to get out of some of the trolling that has been on the internet with with you, about you, to you, uh, you know, scathe or unscathe? I'm going to go to Greg first and, and, and ask you that one. 
Well, I want to flip it on you, Kyle, oh, and, have, and have you define what are we defining tonight as trolling? What are we mm-hmm. talking about when we mm-hmm. say trolling? Because that is a broad topic. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think it can break down into a, a couple of different ways in my mind. I think that some of the the conversations around trolling, a lot of it winds up kind of starting in our minds, in terms of being f- fairly mean spirited, you know, comments towards someone else, or uh, you know, kind of using something that you may know about a person against them sure. uh, to kind of kind of build out, you know, not 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 negative energy, but kind of just the, the ability to say that you kind of gotten them uh, in, in some form or fashion to say that, you know, I got I got one up on you in some way. Um, I feel like there's also some good ways to troll. I think there's a, a, a nice way to do it. And we'll talk about that too uh, in, during, during the episode tonight. But yeah, I think that's the way that I would kind of loosely define it is kind sure. of, you know, using, using energy towards someone in a, in a potentially negative way through words, images, or, or speech uh, in that way. Yeah, and I think that's where it gets to a really interesting, fascinating conversation I'm excited to have with you two tonight, where it is this idea that I think now when you say trolling, right, I think of the internet, I think of comment sections, I think of on Reddit, conversations that are being derailed, that people are trying to make a point, but as you're saying, they've hung up on one thing you may have done years ago on a podcast or you've said on this, and they're just trying to keep you from making your point and getting so loud that they're taking up all the oxygen in the room, getting away from the action actual problem at hand and i think when you take that further back and when you take it to the definition you're going from i think it gets really interesting of what i would call giving someone grief right Mm. like giving your friends shit as we all do and we were talking about this before we went live right like if alana's nice to you she doesn't like you (laughs) (laughs) she doesn't like you if alana's nice to you (laughs) if alana's giving you hell you know that all right cool you're you're cool you're friends right and like that's where you get into such an interesting mix of the internet where I think it's something I struggled with growing up. Cause you know, in my friend group, we, I was bitingly sarcastic and it yeah. was that thing of, I was the funny guy. So it was about making jokes, but to your point, it would eventually go too far, right? Where I would be using something I knew from that is a real hang up for my best friend. So, you know, a real, a real relationship or something I'm bringing into this space that took it too far and it's making everyone else in the room laugh, but it's making them feel bad. And now mm. you can extrapolate that. I think to what trolling on the internet is, and there's so many different emotions tied up in that. Yeah. Alana, any any thoughts to kind of add to the conversation of not only what trolling is, but how you how you've kind of seen it play out and and, and how you might even engage in it? I, language changes. So mm. I troll a lot with great frequency <laughs> and not just to people I know. So like there's this one particular uh, person I follow on Instagram who will occasionally post pictures with a baby, which is his brother's baby. So he'll be like, in the caption, it's like, so proud to be an uncle. I will always write the comment of, oh my God, when did you become a dad? I'm not doing it for him. I am doing it for everyone who follows him to be like, this bitch is so dumb. It clearly says uncle. And I do it almost every time. Um, do you know this person? To do with it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So he knows that I'm joking, but his comment section does not. And I think he has about a million followers and they always get really mad. And like, I get called stupid and they're like, can't you read? And I find that very funny. Um, I also really like doing it to like basically anyone who's a public figure who like wouldn't respond to me, but has a big enough platform that a lot of people will see it. Like I do it to Elon Musk tweets a lot where I'll just say something that is really dumb or like actively hostile Like in a way that like, I'm not insulting them. I'm the butt of the joke by making myself sound really stupid. And Mm. then loads of people flood in and like, call me an idiot. Yeah. (laughs) Like, can't believe you're employed. Like, but I find (laughs) it so funny. Um, And that's kind of like what I feel like trolling actually is and how I've done it even in real life is, I remember like in school, there was just this one day where I managed to really successfully troll someone by trying to convince them that I thought that Ash Ketchum's name in Pokemon was actually Ash Ketchup. And this was before it was easy enough for you to bring out a phone and be like, it says Ketchum. So I was just like, it's Ketchup. Ketchum's not a real name. It's Ketchup because it's based on a town that's in Pokemon. I know that this isn't true, but I'm saying it to get someone really riled up about <laughs> oh, how yeah. stupid I am. Oh, yeah. That's what I think that. trolling yeah. is. And I love it to bits. It's something I, I do all the time and I find really funny. Um, even though I'm the butt of the joke, 
by making myself stupid. Well, see, and a lot of people don't know I'm joking. And that's the best part about that kind of trolling is that for me, that is almost performance art right. where you're walking into your friend's comments, right? And screwing around. Or in this thing, you're saying something so ridiculous, right? That like, no, like this not catch up. What are you talking about? And like, yeah. you know that they're in there and they kind of have that smile as they argue with you, but you're so committed to it. Like that's the... The f trolling, I think so many people enjoy and want to be a part of. And then it's just that thing of it becomes a slippery slope where it's so yeah. easy to cross that line, Khalif. Yeah. And, and I think that that's been one of the most interesting things. You know, again, I'll, I'll use Twitter as the main example because that's where I spend most of my social media time is seeing just how much that has changed over the past 10 years of me being on that platform where there was a space where it felt like there was some some walls there where people were kind of able to either you know take a a light spirited joke and, and and kind of absorb that and and then maybe reflect that back out into the world but now even with the conversations because everything is so heightened in terms of visibility and you know the political the political sphere and how that's kind of broadened out people's emotional uh, um um capacity to kind of like absorb information we talked a little bit about this you know because it's april fools day and 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 why it's so difficult to you know what's real anymore in terms of what what we see um yeah it's been a really wild time to kind of see trolls not only kind of become figures in the space uh but also come become kind of more legitimized in, because of the way that social media has kind of worked in that way too where we see now you know organizations we see you know other other you know entertainers anonymous, anonymous. Almost, mm -hmm. yeah right like a political like, level troll yeah right it was like a, a a social movement or a bunch of folks who believed in, in, in a couple of things that they really wanted to get out into the world and said hey we're going to use that power of trolling uh and we're going to talk a little bit about meme culture during this episode as well um to kind of get the one up one upsmanship on you know political figures and other folks in that space too so it is it is super super wild in that way um i i definitely am on on the kind of light light light-hearted troll side of that too if anyone has been paying attention to the nonsensical year and a half beef between myself and paris lily that is the best it. version the best. of trolling that that, that i've <laughs> so been able to, <laughs> to engage with uh we're literally we're just talking a whole bunch of mess about the way each other cooks uh which is which has been super fun and it's random now at this point where i can be talking about flowers and he'll just randomly come up and like Yo, your food sucks uh, <laughs> so 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 again there's like ways to do but i, I do want to talk about the um we, we have our wonderful uh uh local clinician uh gino in the back who who we get a chance to talk to about some of the topics of you know why you know trolling has become a thing um and, and why the negative version of trolling has become more prevalent um so i asked the question to to him behind the scenes and said you know are there any kind of benefits to trolling or you know kind of where does trolling kind of stem from and he's and and an answer that was shared was uh so it kind of turns out that our parents were right that most bullies tend to believe i'm sorry that most bullies tend to bully about their own insecurities and that mm. there have been studies that individuals have expressed uh, that most explicit things such as homophobia had higher bi biological attraction signals towards same-sex individuals despite denying a same-sex interest. So people are kind of, um, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? Projecting. Yes, projecting. Yeah. That's what I was looking for. A lot of times when we see trolling happening in the space, how, how much of that are you kind of seeing in your day-to-day -day lives as folks who are more public and more in, in the kind of entertainment space do, you, do is the balance always kind of more on the negative side or or, or is it is it kind of evening out for for, for each of you uh, i'm gonna well, go to alan on that one first again i think there's a difference between trolling and harassment though i yeah. feel like probably now we've made them synonymous like that's the way the language has evolved yeah i feel like what i'm doing is trolling when i trick people i don't feel like i'm harassing anyone because i'm not actively saying anything negative to any individual i'm making myself look stupid yeah. um for my own enjoyment i guess still i'm still getting people riled up but uh <laughs> you still go back and laugh at the comments yeah i do yeah I, I love them i find it so fun <laughs> but uh uh harassment like i don't feel like i get trolled very often in terms of like someone saying something um that is with the intention of like tricking me. Obviously, like the Rick roll is still like a really common <laughs> friendly one. You know, yeah, that's like you yeah. just kind of get tricked and someone just lures you into something that you thought that you weren't being lured into. Um, and I, I think that if it does happen to me, 
I really like it. Like, I think that's a really fun banter that I have with, you know, some of my audience on Twitch is if I make a mistake and then they just make fun of me, like, way more than it deserves. <laughs> I like, I find that to be like a really fun <laughs> rhetoric. And I like doing that with friends as well, for sure. Um, I also have particular friends on Twitter who I just go for all the time. Steve Spawn is probably my main one. I am it's like so exceptionally funny. mean to him. <laughs> People so will all the time go and message him and be like, are you guys are you okay? okay? Yeah. <laughs> like, I love him so much and it's so much fun to do. So trolling, I don't feel like it's something that I experience a tremendous amount. I think the most frequent thing that I get trolled about, which is just people throwing it on something and not really like it having any context, is probably console wars stuff. I think I feel oh, like I get yeah. a lot of a lot of that. Um, people talk to me about cyberpunk all the time, and that <laughs> stuff is is definitely just them like throwing something at a wall that isn't even necessarily related to anything that I said. That is just like this talking point that they feel strongly about that they want to include me in. And I think a lot of the console wars stuff, like while those people feel very passionately about it, um, they also have no idea where I fit into it because I openly love Game Pass, but I also work at Sony. So they're like, <laughs> I don't... <laughs> you hosted our very... Xbox podcast, right? I, like, did, oh, I did, I did. How do I... <laughs> they just get very upset about it, um, which, but that but that stuff is like probably the most, the most common kind. And I just don't engage with any of it. Not because I feel like any of it is particularly harmful and I don't feel like I'm being harassed or anything like that. It's just a volume thing where when when you're in a position of being a public figure like unlike how i treat elon musk uh <laughs> these people just really want me to reply like i have no yep. interest in elon replying i am writing a tweet for his audience not for him whereas these people are tweeting at me and if i ever do reply it's a flood of all their followers being like oh my god she replied to you oh my god this made your day and then i'm like it's just not even like the banter isn't fun back and forth it's only so fun as like they have the input and i'm just like whatever so it's harmless pretty frequent um but my way of of dealing with it is not engaging because there's too much of it it would be a giant waste of time and they don't really want any genuine conversation or even genuine banter yeah they just want a response so i just walk away from it pretty much I, I, greg i'm curious too because i you know as a as a kind of funny fan and, and as a part of the, the the crew as well i one of the best things about what you all do is that you give each other a lot of crap all yeah, the time too much sometimes yeah <laughs> and, and, and i'm curious about that because I, I remember very specifically there was a moment where you were kind of talking to one of your co-hosts who was kind of running the boards and you and and, and um there was a moment where you felt like you had gone too far i think you, you were talking to, to kevin yeah uh, who was running the boards and, and it was it was nice to see you have that moment of contrition and say oh wow that is the person who i hurt and yeah. and, 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 and i and i want to i want to go through that really quick and just Share, share a little bit about like what was the thought behind kind of going back sure. and making sure that you know you you had that trolling moment but you, you wanted to pull back and say i want i want to make sure that i'm making this right with the people that i care about i mean that comes from years of experience and growing up and i think to go back to what i was talking about in high school of being so mean right and being and priding myself on my sharp wit and i could take you out at the knees whenever i wanted to yeah. kind of with a joke kind of thing right i remember going to college and still having that with me and joining a group in college called the antlers that whole are the whole thing since 1976 has been to get in the opposing basketball team's head which means <laughs> prank phone calls in the middle of the night it means going to their campus and getting pizzas delivered at three in the morning like all these crazy stuff I mean, right you're also a real life wrestler greg i that's also the and, oh, it's and, true. and that's the thing and like i remember you know in college i always talk about you know growing up there and becoming an adult there and learning from my people who are surrounding me there my friends group my friend group that became my family in missouri and these people that were so salt of the earth and so good natured in a way mm. I had never known a human being to be. And the fact that like I could yeah lay anybody out, but like they never swung back. And it was this very hard thing for me to learn that like I loved my friends in high school, but didn't feel comfortable. I didn't know how to say that. Your kids, you're growing up, you don't know. And this is back in the time, you know, when it was like, oh man, even hugging your male friend, whoa, what what are you doing? You know what I mean? Right, you you right. had that weird, and I hope it isn't like that anymore, but it may, may it probably still is for kids growing up. Then to get to college and learn to be able to say to your friends you love, learn that you've hurt somebody's feelings, learn you've crossed the line. I remember going back and talking to friends from high school and being like, I'm sorry. Like I and they were like, What are you talking about? And I'm like, I know we're cool. It's not about that. I know that I crossed the line. Mm. You jump ahead to kind of funny and you're talking about, you know four people who left their jobs and worked out of a spare bedroom where in the house where two of them lived and tensions get high. You know, you guys are both content creators. You know it. You know how much you pour yourself into this. And I always feel like I am one tiddly wink away from falling, breaking down and losing it all. 
Yeah. So there are those highs and lows of celebrating with them. And then like, you know, you talk about Kevin, like, Kevin runs the boards because one day Kevin ran, walked into the spare the, the studio, the spare bedroom, and found me crying at the desk because I just couldn't get OBS to do what I wanted to do. And mm. He said, I'll, I'll do it. I'll take it over. And since that day, he's been in charge and learned to do that. Yeah. And long, I'm always long-winded. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> the thing is, we've transgressed. And you've done that thing where you hurt each other. And we've, do, we've been around each other long enough that... You know, we've all hurt each other by, by saying something and then not addressing it and then having it be that steam in the kettle, right? That goes, goes, goes. And then finally you let it out. And it's like, whoa, you're this mad about something. I'm sorry. You know, and you have that out. And so like, like it sounds goofy. I know, but like we have a safe word. Like if somebody mm -hmm. says pickles, the joke stops. We've crossed the line. This is not cool anymore. Sorry, this is too real. And you don't even need to say that as you're talking about, like, you know, I say something and it's a joke, joke, joke. Everybody's having fun. And then Kevin, I can tell has been hurt. Or I know that I know that I'm just, I just don't want to be represented that way. I've gone yeah. too far and you stop and you say it because like, you know, my whole thing has been growing up in front of a microphone in terms of who I am in to the audience, right? I've been doing this for 14 years. Like you can go back and listen to game scoops and jokes I would make there. Where I would never say that. And I didn't have that life experience that I didn't know. And so to get here now and be working so closely with this team and building something with that team, like there's such a big part of it of they're my family and I want to take care of them. And we can still have those jokes, but it can cross the line. And if I can dominate a little bit more of the conversation, yeah. that's something we're going to get into is then, you know, we keep each other so close in this community. And the whole thing is that, you know, that you're listening to a podcast. You're, if I say four, sometimes five best friends, I'm talking about you being the fifth best friend. You're listening. So many people talk about being in their cars and talking to their radio while I'm like, oh, that's so stupid, Greg, or whatever. That goes with the jokes too. And so mm. we've learned that if you don't nip a joke in the bud, if it does hurt somebody's feelings and you just let it lie, the audience has no idea the line's been crossed and they will tweet it. They will bring it up. They will make fan art. They will do these things. Like we've had it in the, you know, jokes we've made about people who don't even work at kind of funny, you know, we'll start something with somebody who's a personality who's come through once or twice or whatever, or, you know, a fan who's been involved and like the community then keeps, it keeps using it on them in a way that is positive, but it is trolling. And if you're, you, you didn't sign up for that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what people know you for. And they want to reference this one thing over and over. We've had to have full stops with the community of like, hey, everybody. And by the way, don't talk about this to this person anymore. Like it was a joke we were making. We didn't realize it got out of hand with that's all they were getting in their chat when they were alive. That's not cool. And again, you know, we're lucky that our community is small enough and passionate enough. They're like, oh, totally cool. Like people aren't doing it to be mean. They're doing it because they want to be friends in the same way you give each other grief. But it happens to me all the time that I open that my Twitter. Thing. Oh, sorry, happened go ahead. pretty frequently at Rooster Teeth yeah. where it didn't actually happen to me um, but I also am really bad at figuring out when anyone's trying to be mean I'm, I, everything I'm like <laughs> which is kind of <laughs> a deficiency um, but sometimes <laughs> someone would like you know a member of the RT community would walk up to uh, generally a female member of staff and make a joke that someone had made on a podcast or something that when the person on the podcast made it it's two friends making the joke yeah. but when a stranger makes the joke it's a it's a person you don't know it's mm -hmm. and, and it, i think you know that's the the issue with like the way that brands can feel like friends is that there are barriers that it's really complicated like we still don't know how to talk about this stuff yeah. um is that you can be trolled by an audience member in a way that it feels extremely hostile because it's someone who you've never seen before but they've seen your face a million times they know how you reacted to it on this thing so it's this odd kind of um one-way relationship essentially but that was definitely a common thing that someone would kind of get what feels like harassment from an audience member because of a joke that was made on a podcast previously. And I think it's good that you guys address it. Like I've never thought to do that. Never considered being like, Hey, remember this is for this room and should yeah. it exist outside I mean, of it. Again, we're lucky that, you know, it's, that easy that that's what we from day one is what we built right this i you know we weren't building it for you we're building it with you which goes so far and like you know to bring it back to a, a, an actual more relevant example of negative trolling right is like when we were just doing the fcf the fan control football stuff oh, yeah. like yeah. uh we kept getting screwed over by calls <laughs> by the refs and so like i was and i was being my very wrestling heel persona throughout it cutting promos on richard sherman and all this stuff and like of course it's back to the elon musk thing at that point right alana where it's like Richard Sherman and Quavo aren't watching this three minute long video. And even if they were, they're laughing. They, what do they care what I say? You know what I mean? Yeah. But when it was the refs thing and I was like super mad at them, I went on, I did two different tweets in the same game that were like, F these refs, fire these refs, yada, yada, yada. And then as soon as the game was over, 
I turned off my phone and went back to being a husband and hung out with my uh, you know wife. And the next day, I the FCF was actually put up a poll because it's all fan control. And was like, do, you know, should we fire? Should we get rid of the refs? Should we change the way plays are called? And I quote to him like, we won, blah blah blah. And I, I then looked at it that day, and I was it's, people were like dude, you crossed the line last night and this is even further. And I was like, what? And I went back and looked at those <laughs> tweets and there was like threads and subreddit threads about like, hey man, like I like when Greg does the heel stuff with Austin and like he's a, you know, a bad, uh, a bad guy in a professional wrestling sense. But like, this is just blasting this man on Twitter, this ref mm. that's doing his job and people don't get that. And it was like the community putting me in check. And I, cause I, my knee jerk reaction when I woke up was I read it. I put up a Reddit, a, a long Reddit post that was like, Hey man, I'm doing this wrestling character thing, and uh, you know this is what we're doing, yada yada yada, and I, I, blah blah, and it's antler stuff, and yeah, and people went in there and like, you know, I want to say it was like a 96 response thread of like, we hear you, we understand what you're going for, but it's not working, and here's why, and it was like mm. four hours later, I re- I came back, read through it all, and I put up a thing like, you know what, I deleted the tweets, I'm done with that, that's not a thing anymore, and like, thank you for keeping me in check because it goes both ways of. We get it all the time where, yes, we make a joke on the podcast, and it's what we were talking about earlier. You're in there. It's me and Nick. We're going back and forth on each other. We're having a great time. Awesome show. Show ends. Uh, life continues. Uh, my car's got this problem. Portilla needs to do this. Oh, I forgot about that. Blah, blah. And then, okay, a moment of respite. And I open my phone three days later, and somebody's <laughs> throwing something in my face. And I'm like, what? oh, this is a thing from the podcast. Damn it. All right. You know what I mean? Like you never know what mental state someone's in when that joke continues because for them, they're in the moment right there having the joke. Yeah. And, yeah. and it happens often where you have the conversation of in, in group jokes versus out group jokes. And you yeah. have those things that happen often. And again, it is also super weird because of the work that we do where time is not really a thing where people are coming to your content at whenever they come to your content. Uh, So I've gotten so many messages and YouTube comments about a thing that happened a year ago that I've then people will just like, Khalif, how could you say that thing? And I also think people remember the things that they've listened to more than the things they've said, because people will remember stuff that we said on a podcast and be like, you guys already spoke about this. But the four of us will be like, what? (laughs) The amount of times I will we'll be headlining a show we're like great headline, and then Tim's like, "Wait, we did it four weeks ago." I'm like, what? Really? <laughs> Time is very, very weird in that way. Um, yeah. And Gina, Gina also shares in in our in our side chat um, about how just you know when you're having these conversations on the internet, when you're getting these messages from other people who you don't know, you know, folks who are in in our audience, there is no way to determine sarcasm. There's no way to determine, yeah, you know, between you know tone and and how that stuff works it's the reason why whenever i'm mad at someone in my life i will make sure that i call them as opposed to texting them that Mm. is a rule that i made uh because i know that i can't get and convey tone in the way that i can just have the conversation with you um in that way which i think is also really really important for folks to kind of break into that space especially like having studied writing at university yep like just love language in general and you know there are people who criticize the incorrect use of grammar or punctuation but i think that it's actually something that's very cool is the way that uh, language has has evolved on social media so if i'm saying something that is sarcastic it's always lowercase i will not use full stops Mm -hmm. it will always be lowercase if i am intentionally trying to be facetious or make a joke my grammar and punctuation changes and i think that works for some amount of people obviously that means that you have to be versed in that kind of language but i'm really specific about that and so interested in watching that evolve and I, I saw this thread the other day that was um someone basically highlighting all of twitter's most overused terms and like i know that that stuff grates on a lot of people but i think it's something that's very cool like the idea of that's it that's the tweet yes that's something that is said a lot and i i you know i can understand something being annoying if you see it frequently but it is also a very specific facetious form of communication that anyone can understand where if you write anything without that it can mean something different Totally. So it's I'm like short, very yeah. close. It's letting you, yeah. it's, it's letting you know, or as you look at it, right. It's a visual cue that this is, this is in a meme sense. This is a joke. This, this is, is the tone of what this thing is. And I, yeah. I am like very for that stuff. Like the, but we're not ready for that conversation yet. Like that kind of stuff <laughs> that just like repeatedly shows up on Twitter. It's like, yeah, I've, I've fully seen even people that I, I really love be like, Oh my God, I hate this. This drives me crazy. And my response to that, 
uh, as someone who's annoyed by almost nothing is why do you care? It's just words. But on the other hand, I'm like very enthusiastic about it. I'm like, I think this evolution of the way that we're conveying jokes through text is actually really, really useful. And those repetitive phrases are just born of us not knowing exactly how to convey sarcasm over text. So I'm like yeah. extremely pro Twitter cliches because it's how we, we kind of have to adapt to communicating tone. So they're signposts, right? And they help yeah. so much in determining that. And that was the thing today where like, I did the thing I'm sure both of you have where I started up on a tweet. I had what I wanted and I was like, oh, wait, but like this is going to be taken out of context. So then I started adding tweets in, in before I published to add the context. And then I have a Twitter thread that's four <laughs> things long. And I'm like, they're just going to retweet the first thing. They're never going to. And I just deleted the tweet. I'm like, this isn't worth it. Like, what am I trying to say? And is Twitter with this 280 characters the best way to say it? Yeah, it, it's hard. And, and I love that you shared that part, uh, Alana, about kind of the language and how it has kind of morphed over the years. I remember being very, very mad some years ago because I was really tired and had nothing really to be mad about, but it was so upset about whoever decided that writing everything in all caps was screaming. <laughs> and I was like, I hate this. This is dumb. Why? Who made this rule that this is the thing? But it is a weird part of the internet culture that has, you know, grown with us. That is, I think it helps us. Yeah, it's 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 an interesting way of how to kind of, you know, have those communications when, again, I feel like there are some aspects to, to, to all of this that makes so much more sense for not only where we've kind of landed in terms of internet culture, and we're going to talk about meme culture in a second, because I think that's a really important part of this, but it's also one of those things of there's also this interesting distance that we've given each other because of the way that we communicate via text and also via, you know, social media aspects where so much of that stuff you know, uh, the, the running joke in my in, in conversations with me and my friends around watching Marvel movies is like, man, you would not have so many superheroes if they would just go to therapy. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it would be so much nicer if they would just talk to each other about half of the stuff that they were be beefing about. <laughs> um, meme culture has been a big part of the way things have kind of evolved, not only in the way that we playfully troll with folks, but now we've seen that kind of grow into a much larger potential problem with how folks kind of come to conversations, how folks have used, you know, visual aids to kind of help to demean people and and, and, and put people into to, to bad spaces. How, how are you both thinking about meme culture now? I remember, you know, we talked about a little about Rick Rowling and how that was kind of super fun and playful. Um, but over the years, it's gotten really, really rough. And it's gotten kind of really, really harsh in those ways. Are you are you are you coming to meme culture? understanding you know one because there are so many memes that happen at so many times that sometimes you have to catch up and you're like i don't even know what this meme is is this a bad meme is this a good meme like what's the what's the process for you when it comes to engaging in meme culture and, and, and what are some of the tactics tactics or things that you're seeing that, that are kind of coming up that are prevalent um greg i'm curious your thoughts about you know where, where you kind of landed with meme culture at this point for me with memes and using them right I like them. I think it's a shorthand like we're talking about, right? Yeah. Where most of the time you put something into a meme and you understand what's going on to or what, you know, the context of what's happening, right? Whether it's the, you know, it worked out when I saw the other day when Paris was like, oh man, really excited for Outriders. I went and got the mean girl. Hey, loser, get in the car. We're going over playing Outriders, right? And send it to him, right? Like that kind of thing. That's where I'm using them. I, for me personally, I don't, it's a rule because I've screwed it up before. Uh, I won't use it unless I understand what it is, where, what, what, like, what is the context? Where is this from? And I mean, that's, mm -hmm that's more dialed into even gifts i guess because when twitter added gift reactions i was like oh man yeah i love this and you put in shocked you put in angry you put in whatever and you click and you use it and i did it that one time and somebody came back and was like oof greg using a john tron and i was like who is john Tr oh no right. no no, no I that tweet. sorry i didn't know who that was and i didn't know sorry sorry sorry, sorry. and like that's the thing right where it's like right. suddenly it has to be I ha you have to treat the meme, GIF, whatever it is that you're using, the piece of content you're using, like you use your words, like you treat your words and how you, I, you, what you're going to say and how you vet what you're about to get into. Yeah. Alana, I'm, I'm curious your thoughts about meme culture and, 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 and how much you use it versus how much you don't and, and how do you kind of engage in it? Listen. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I, uh, you I smiled when you said that you like you felt did. like meme culture had gotten worse. Um, so from the age of about 12 to probably 17, I frequented 4chan, like yeah. very frequent. Maybe it wasn't that old. I might've been a little bit younger, which is such a good note that if you ever want to think about the kind of people who use 4chan was a 12 year old. So I thought yeah. like I was a little edge Lord. I was there for the, the beginning of a lot of memes. Um, like Halo is my favorite 
is my favorite uh doesn't afraid of anything he kills mm. aliens um like just like weird stuff like that all your base all belong to us like really really old memes that were like kind of nonsensical some of them were also pretty problematic though like pools closed which mm. if i'm to like explain that now like just like read up on it explaining it would be very weird but like i was i was aware of that while it was happening that you know at the time as a teenager it was just like a thing that happened but now i'm like horrified by the implications of of what pools closed uh was trying to do um so it's a thing that i actually feel like has largely as it has become more mainstream or normie as they would call it on 4chan um <laughs> yeah. has gotten a lot softer and, and a lot uh kinder over time than it used to be um but memes were back then i felt like it was almost just a way to express that you were a part of something <laughs> uh that was what it was intended to be is like hey this is this community that i am a part of we speak this language that's kind of what a meme felt like to me when i was a teenager who was still very awkward and shy and nerdy and played video games it's, it was like going on a 4chan board again just wouldn't recommend it to anyone like not a part of my history i'm proud of um but but it, it's evolved a lot since then and now it's like baby yoda and, and bernie sanders and that sure. kind of stuff that is still just people kind of making a commentary on a thing that's happening um in a way that again i'm very pro evolution of language so it's just a different form of language on the internet that i am i'm very much cool with and i think it can be hard to keep up some of some of them i'm like what is this meme about what does this mean and I, I don't actually spend very much time on twitter so like i miss things all the time like i missed bean dad i missed whatever this shrimp cereal yeah, thing yeah. is oh, like oh, yeah. i never see any of that stuff and tend to find out via someone else telling me about it you get your, yeah part. somebody at the end is like what did i miss today they give you <laughs> the whole much. rundown of I'll all see the a reference like, i try not to today. go on i said this last episode i think i try not to go on twitter until like 3 p.m or so generally like until at least the afternoon i try to just like avoid it in the morning some some days i will but mostly just like stay away so i miss loads of stuff and that definitely bit me in the ass on um uh, the day that the capital uh, oh yeah, yeah. Thing yeah, yeah, yeah. happened. Yeah. What did I tweet? I tweeted something like it. So it all I saw was that Trump was being removed from Twitter, and I tweeted something along the lines of like, "Ha ha! Wow, did I miss anything today?" <laughs> um, that was that is still a common thing to say. Is like, "Ha ha! Hey guys, what did I miss?" Is like it was all lowercase. You know, it's the same like kind of communication, but it turned out what I missed was a lot more serious. Yeah. Than Trump leaving Twitter. Um, and I was like, "Oh no, the context of this is absolutely terrible." And I. I I got called out for that rightly. Like some people in my DMs were like, I know that you would not have said this considering what's actually happening here. Um, that that was the thing where I was like, okay, tweeting something reactionary where memes are concerned, you do have to still do more research because totally. the context of what happens on a Twitter day can be way bigger than what you have just seen, especially as someone who tries not to spend too much time on that app. It's like a, if I'm going to have an input on a current event, which now I just try to avoid mostly, <laughs> I need to at least have like like you said greg like understand the source of what this chain of events is yeah because the context to everyone else can be different to the context of of what you have seen or what you're saying so the short answer memes were way worse and have gotten a lot better <laughs> from <laughs> the days i spent on 4chan i promise um seen some stuff i wish i could unsee um but i mm -hmm. i also think it, it is really just a, a community culture thing where like you know Twitter has its own memes. Tumblr has its own mm -hmm, memes. Mm -hmm. Facebook has its own memes. It's all just a a a way of showing that you are a part of a community that you can't otherwise do just through text. Is because we all understand this thing. We are all conveying this thing in the same way. And again, that's why I'm pro. That's it. That's the tweet. This ain't it. Chief. <laughs> I'm, I'm pro all of it. Well, you yeah. know, especially talking about memes, right? And you know, like you're talking about being a four chan edge lord, right? Like I remember. I think that's such a rite of passage for our community and i'm talking about gamers or gamers, people yeah. dialed into the internet right because mm -hmm. it was the same for me even way back in the day of getting in there of feeling like oh, i found my people you know what yeah. i mean when i'd go to my justice league role playing verbal role playing thing right we go in there and chat room spar or whatever it was that thing of like you had that and even you know when i uh you know started dating my wife uh you know when i met her younger sister her younger sister is very active on the internet and super in is is one of us right and it was that thing of like when she finally was like 
is this guy cool or not? She started showing me memes that her and her friends were passing around. And like, that is still the currency, right? It is still this thing of like, oh, let me show you. This is a funny one. Let's see this. Let's see that. And like, yeah, you know, by the time it gets mainstream and it is, all right, cool. Everybody's using, no, it's the principal Skinner. Like, no, no, it's the children who are wrong, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, every, all right, cool. That one's played out or whatever. But there's, it still works for Twitter. It still works for what's happening. Yeah, it's still a, a culture thing. It's just that the cultures have gotten bigger, I think. Whereas yeah. the stuff that existed yeah. on 4chan obviously has still you know if i would tweet halo is a pretty cool guy uh, enough people would know what that means i actually think it wouldn't be most of my audience but enough yeah. people would know what i'm referring to but it's just that, that yeah as as these websites have gotten bigger the amount of people who understand the memes have gotten bigger and thus the culture has gotten bigger but i could still try to show my mom bernie sanders meme and she'd be like this is a picture of an <laughs> old man what does this mean yeah <laughs> and Which, I think, again you know, i think it's cool and it's to, your, to your you know the halo tweet and then also just the tweet of and anyway, i'm missing anything today right like it's also something we not struggle with but have to think about in the way of like cool i can come out and scream my head off about the refs and if you're watching the game with me right now if you understand we own a football team haha ha, greg's being crazy if you just follow me because you liked me at the dice awards or you think uh, you want to know playstation news you're like what the hell is going on and that's Who that is that greg he's not my greg that's the hard thing of uh, balancing right of like you know something that can be a fun a great joke to you that you think is hilarious how many times have i done it i'm like i'll delete this because it's not worth the one the not even the one the group of people who won't get it or the one slice that would get it it's the struggle yeah. that i have when streaming pretty often is that mm -hmm. i and I, I still don't know what to do about it i was just talking about this the other night is that i will make a joke on a stream that is catered to the people that i am streaming with mm -hmm. so i will make a joke that is i know these p these three people i'm streaming with are okay with this joke and that's what I'm going to say. But then I have to remember that there are also a thousand plus people watching that. And and I, I'm like, I don't know who's the audience for my joke, because the way that naturally I want to be like, it's the people I'm playing with. They're the ones right. I'm trying to make laugh. They're the ones I'm having candid conversations with. But then you also have to remember that everyone watching may not feel the same way about the joke. And I think that's the thing. Like I said, I still don't know where I land on that. Like if I'm trolling my friends publicly, I'm doing it because I know they're OK with it, because that's the rapport that we have. But that necessarily isn't the case for everyone else. Like I made a joke the other day about Steve Spawn not being able to get up a staircase. Yeah. He can't. He's very open about stairs being his nemesis. And yeah. it's like an ongoing joke that yeah. I know Steve is okay with that I would never say to any other disabled person that I'm right. only saying to Steve. But when I make that joke, I'm still saying it in front of 400,000 people. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Who am I going to upset? And that's the thing, like knowing Steven being his friend too. Like he has the darkest sense of humor. He's yeah. the first person to use his disability as a punchline to get yeah. him, especially to make people cringe. But if you don't, like there's so many people who don't know him as that. And so like, even when he tweets that, he gets it all the time. But like, yeah, for you to come out, for us to come out and make those kind of, make a joke, even if it is, it's just between us. He gets the joke. That's great. It doesn't matter when everybody else sees it. And they're like, yeah, it is fun to make handicap or fun handicap people. Like, whoa, no, that's not, that's no. not what the takeaway here and was. And that's why it's complicated is because I, where I, I, like I said, I still haven't figured out my answer to this, but where I land on it right now is that for me to take that humor away from Steve, who is a person that I'm very good friends with, who has fun with that mm -hmm. as a person I know personally seems worse. Like for me to treat Steve differently publicly than as he would like to be treated as he treats himself and as he treats me, I think feels like a negative impact on someone I personally know mm -hmm. um, that like, I think if I changed my sense of humor and I stopped bullying Steve, that would suck for him. But then I still have <laughs> to think Steve. about <laughs> yeah, trolling, sorry, not bullying. Um, but then, you know, it, it is still a thing that I, I think about every time. I'm like, is this going to upset someone else? And I think if they were to talk about it, they'd be right like if someone would be like you made sure. this joke about a disabled person how do you think i feel as a disabled person i that's never happened but i still think if i got called out on it which maybe it will happen at some point i'd be like <laughs> you are right i don't know what to do about this yet I, 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 out. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say the tactic that i have used in those circumstances because for me it's culturally too right we, there's, there's some cultural jokes that go across you know folks within the black community too where it's just like i will like Paris or, or somebody else who we were having a, a, a faux argument on the internet. And I was like, Negro. And people around the conversation were like, <gasps> like, oh my God, you just said that word. How dare you say that thing? And I was like, but this is a cultural thing that we, again, as, as folks in this community, we, you know, depending upon who you are, like it's an okay thing to say or talk about in that way. But with the way I've kind of given it to people is to say, we have, we have decided, me and this person have decided that this is okay. Yeah. 
Yeah. And we have we have had the conversation. If you choose to to be upset by this thing, I can understand that. But understand that we are okay uh within within the grouping that we're we're having that conversation. So um, I think that there's a good way to be able to do it so that you can verbalize it externally so that yeah. it's on the record. Uh, yeah. so that so that that way when folks do come to you and say, well, I didn't I didn't understand that, or why'd you say that thing? It's like we have an understanding and that's okay between us. I, I apologize if that offended you, and I'm sorry that that's the that's the that's that's what's happened here, sure. but I but I want to make sure that you understand that we have a relationship and that's okay. And that's always the struggle, right? Because it is that thing of I'm right there with both of you, right? Of there are plenty of times where I sit there and go, should I make this? And I'm like, well, it's me and I'm talking to this person or I'm screwing around or whatever. Yeah, I'm going to do this. And that, of course, is what gives all of us personality. If you wanted this, you know, right. completely neutered, middle of the road, uh, milk toast, like there's nothing. Why would you follow that person? Why would you interact with their content? Why would you, if they're you, that, what's the draw there? Not that the anger is the draw, but the personality is. And so, yeah. What the push and pull of it always is, is like, yeah, I'm going to do stuff and I'm going to put out stuff that I believe in and I back. And that if you're going to have a conversation like the ref thing, I'm going to engage in the conversation and go with it. It's just for me, I've had more of the the other flip of it, right? Where it's not, I've offended somebody and they come and tell me about it. It's Mm. I've offended somebody and Greg Miller sucks and I'm never going to, and and it'll be years later. It'll be through somebody else that I'll hear oh, well, I know that this person, and I'm like, whoa, what? Like, I didn't, I would have loved to have addressed this. I would have loved to have had a conversation with that person or the whoever's angry about it, but you don't get that chance necessarily, right? Because, you know, that's how Steve and I first met is that we were doing, uh, not me and him, I was doing, we were both at PAX. I was doing PAX of Mania. And again, it's professional wrestling and it's not, but it's us all playing a wrestling game and having characters and acting like morons. And as always, me being the bad guy, me being the heel. And at the Pax of Mania and Pax East before, uh, I had gotten hurt at the very end of it. Dan Record really hurt me because he, <laughs> yeah, he, he does not know how to. He does not not know how to do an elbow drop. He almost <laughs> broke my ribs and I was hurt. So it was this storyline to get to Pax West that I had been hurt. And so the, what I thought was a great gimmick was to come in in a wheelchair and act like I was destroyed, right? Mm. And have somebody talk into a microphone and have me just be in the chair, and then at the very end get up and screw everything up for the champion, yada yada yada. And the room seem to get it the majority of people got it you know i can't speak for every human being especially the people who i'll get to in a second they got it everybody loved it they knew who greg miller was they knew i was a bad guy they understood the dynamics of professional wrestling and that i'm the bad guy to lose i'm going i'm here to get you over i'm here for the good guy to win but there was people there who didn't get that and didn't know me and thought it was a real uh uh, shot at disabled people Mm. and so they went and talked to steve about it and we're like they came in there they went to the able gamers desk uh, uh booth and they're like this is happening. It's happening here. And Steve, you know, to Steve's credit was just like, I've had passing interactions with Greg Miller and I see him online and that doesn't sound like it, but we'll look into it. And so he emailed me and did a call with me and I explained everything I just explained here. And he was like, understand it. I get it. Of course I I understand that. But, and we went through it and it was this moment of like, that was on me. You know what I mean? I, that at no point, it's not that, I, you know, was like, oh, man, like, what are you talking about? I was like, I see your side. It's always that empathy for me of being able to be like, I get it. And I transgressed here. And it was mainly the fact of my own privilege of at no point did it even enter my mind that yeah. somebody might see that and think that the disability was the butt of the joke. It, the, right. the butt of the joke in my mind, 100% was look at fat Greg Miller, who's trying to cheat his way to the top. Right. But like, that's the kind of thing you need to understand is that it can play to that room. It can play to that fan base. It can, so many people were there, saw it and thought it was the funniest thing. And never, nobody ever said something to me like, mm, you might be crossing a line. Cause we just didn't think in that context, but you remove it. You take one step out of it and you see, you it. can't know until oh. someone tells you is, exactly. a, is a big thing. And that's like, you know, one of my bigger issues with the idea of progressive stuff on social media is that a lot of the time it doesn't feel like it's in favor of, progress because it's like you made a mistake and we would like you to die yeah um oh, yeah, and that can be yeah. really complicated and I, I don't even think it's a pc culture issue i think it's just human nature we used to stone people in the streets for suspected adultery is the thing that i feel like you know it's it's just human nature to do that and and we're just not prepared for what that looks like on social media yeah. um but i'm you know very pro people learning and i will say to your credit greg you said something about me on a panel once that I was told about. People tweeted me or came up to me and told me about it. Oh, and it I was a comment. I, it's a comment didn't I didn't I come like. To you? I think I came to you. You did. Okay. You came to me. <laughs> so like it was something that I did not like, but that I was not going to address. Um, but then you came to me and uh, like, well, like, hey, this is a thing that happened. Apologize if I offended you. 
Like he is the context of all of this. And that was like an incredible thing to do because most people won't do that. Like that's a step to to even have considered that. Like, I don't know if anyone spoke to you about it. Like I said, they came to me about it. I don't know if they ever came to you about it. And we don't need to get into what it was, but it was still oh, a thing no, that like, yeah. most people don't do that. Like does I, there a, I, does I, that I, thing I, you need to I make? I think you knew me and I'd like to think you knew me at least well enough then to understand as well. If somebody told you about it secondhand, you're like, well, he wasn't trying to actually get me. Like, you know what I mean? Mm. Like that's the... I, feel yeah, I didn't feel like you were trying to get me. I feel no. so much of what we do is that, you know, and it's hard to explain if you don't do it, but podcasting or streaming or whatever is this constant high wire thing of trying to do this thing and yada, yada, yada. And I, you know, Damon Hatfield at IGN used to always describe my mind as I reached into the black hole, would grab something and throw it out. And it was usually some crazy joke or story or whatever. But it happens and it blows up in your face all the time. Or not blows up, but where I grab something and I throw it out and it's like, oh man. That was half baked. That yeah. you know what I mean. Like, and again, yeah. it's the, exactly what we're talking about in a hour long PAX panel where a million other things are happening, where I'm <laughs> chugging beers and this is happening. Blah, blah, blah. Like, mo hopefully, most people aren't hung up on that comment, unless like in terms of it being a serious uh, attack or jab or whatever. But then it is that thing of for me personally, that's the one thing I can't. I, I can't tell you the number of times the show ends and I'll turn to Tim and be like, "Did I cross the line with this? Did I do this?" Blah blah blah. Because. I've learned the hard way the amount of times that you say something that I think is completely in jest or is like totally just, I, but I know that it'll get translated to somebody through a game of telephone and all of that stripped out. It's that Greg on a podcast said this about this person. And that person's like, why the, why would Greg say that about me? You know what yeah. I mean? And it's like, yeah. let alone at PAX where you're doing your own thing or whatever it was PAX, right? Yeah. Where, where you're doing your own thing. You're on a million different, like, yeah, and so that's what I've learned a long time ago. Is like, yeah, I, I remember this. Yeah, we were gonna put it up. So I was like, can I do? You, I'll edit this out. And you're like, that'd be great. I'm like, awesome. I think I did say that. Yeah, because the the comment was something that was like added negativity to a, a stereotype. But it was I knew that it wasn't a personal intent. But that's I think a really like good good way to look at it that I'm probably not aware enough of is when your trolling could potentially affect someone. And there are people that I know, like Mike Bithel's really good at that. Um, Zach Ryan is really good at that. Yeah. Like people that I know that are like very good at being like, this could have potentially offended someone. Whereas like, I don't feel like I have enough awareness of that kind of thing, but maybe it's like a thing that b being insular in that way can be really helpful where I just tend to assume that nobody's offended by anything. <laughs> I'm like, that's probably not the best way to go. It's just because that's how I operate is like very rarely does a joke ever bother me. So then, like, it's just, you know, you have to work harder to relate to remember other people aren't necessarily the same as you. And it's it's a good thing to keep in check when you are someone who actively trolls. Yeah. yeah. And, and and it's great to see you two kind of work that out, right? It's, it was one of those things that where folks don't have that kind of self-realization or they're not kind of, you know, introspective in that way. And, you know, for everybody is, who's in the chat and you're thinking about good ways to kind of figure out ways to talk about all of these things and you're hearing these conversations from folks who are at the top of their game even you know going through the issues of trying to figure out how to find good words uh to be able to to be able to make those messages clear you so can go to find this out, this st stuff out live in front of everyone yeah <laughs> That's absolutely. How it works. absolutely yeah there's, there's a great resources for this if you're looking to to get into this and, and have more discussions and, and find more tools to put in your toolbox you can definitely go over to findyourwords.org there's a fantastic mm -hmm. site over there be able to go check out and, and find more resources to do that work and have you know good language and, and good tactics to be able to kind of do those things for yourself. Um, and also there's a really great interactive video that the folks from Presence of Mind, uh, KP and Cloud9 have put together. Uh, it is launching today. Uh, so you'll be able to go check that out. And if you want to check it out for another reason besides finding good tactics to be able to learn about mental health, uh, connecting to your total health and the importance of making mental health a priority and resources that are available for you to learn more. You can also win one of five C9 Secret Lab chairs that are beautiful. They are lovely. They are really comfy and they fit your behind. So that would be really, really good. <laughs> uh, May 27th, uh, check out the stream then. And that's when they'll be giving the, we'll be giving that away. We'll be announcing the winners there. So, so make sure you check that out and go Check out the video. There's a link in the chat right now. There's a chat bot putting that out as we speak. Um, before we get up out of here, because we have a couple minutes left, I think we, we we talked a lot about kind of the the external parts of this uh, from the gaming perspective. I'm sorry, from more from the social media perspective, but within the gaming space specifically, you know, there's a lot of difference between in-game trolling and out out of game trolling. Mm -hmm. I think the most kind of classic version of in-game trolling is the classic tea bag yeah. uh that we see happen tactical in crouch tactical <laughs> crouching uh as as the young kids say um i i feel like there's some spaces in there too that have kind of changed as well in the ways that we 
have learned to troll. We we talked a little bit about you know games like Among Us before we before we jumped on stream. Uh, I feel like that's a game that mm. brings in trolling in some fantastic ways. Are there any other games that you think of uh, that 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 lend to either really you know good natured trolling or or even some some not so good natured trolling? It's, I think that's a really interesting question because when I'm thinking about it. Trolling in game can completely ruin games for some people. Yeah. Um, I built this <clears throat> this tree in Minecraft, which I had to grow. So like I built the base of a tree out of wood, but then planted trees in specific areas, like by putting a bit of dirt on the side and then a tree in it, making sure they had the right amount of sunlight, the right amount of block space. So I basically built like this giant tree. It took hours. Hours and hours and hours and hours. I don't like and, where the story's going already. Oh yeah, this yeah, is so my, my heart. Some, right. some griefers came into the server and burnt the tree down. And to oh. them, that's trolling. But to me, that was really upsetting. And I haven't touched Minecraft yeah. since. Like, I was like, you took something that I built lovingly, really <laughs> carefully. Like, mm -hmm. it was almost like like um, Ewok-esque in that, like, even the outside of the tree, all of the branches connected and had, la like, I was, I loved it. <laughs> and they burned it out. That's still technically trolling. But it it's something that just, like, really negatively impacted me. And I feel like that's a thing where... I definitely troll in some games. Like, I think it can be really funny in Sea of Thieves. But when you mm. don't know the kind of attitude of the person that you're playing against, it can be really complicated. Like, I find it very funny mm. to break onto someone else's ship in Sea of Thieves and then just stand on their wheel. I don't even know if you can do it anymore. Just You just stand there <laughs> so they can't move. And, <laughs> and, like, that's still bad, bad natured. I would only do it to someone who had tried to attack or engage in combat first. But it can still, like, really negatively influence someone else's play style um i definitely feel like people who use uh bots uh in a first person shooter that's competitive even as someone who's not particularly competitive can be very annoying to the extent where i don't want to play anymore but mm. to them it's funny so like that is i feel like a really complicated one to answer because you can completely ruin someone's gaming experience and that's like the lowest thing on the list of the things i want to do is turn <laughs> anyone off a video game so yeah. i feel like that's really hard yeah, Especially when you think about how busy everybody is, right? That's that, yeah. that person's 20 minutes, 30 minutes, yeah. an hour to play a game a night, and you're gonna you're screwing around with them and yeah, and climbing on their wheel, like it sucks and it breaks your heart to think about. And like it was one of those that I had you know, I talk about like learning and growing up and all this stuff, right? Like I remember we did a video at IGN when Mag dropped. Uh, and it was uh, Jim <laughs> Riley uh, and it was, it was filming me or whatever, playing it on PS3, and you could team kill in it. And so what it would be is that I we would spawn in and I would just let, throw grenades all over the floor. And then I would troll and be like, well, why'd you kill me? Like, I didn't kill you. It was that guy. And I would start naming names of this other guy. And that guy's like, I didn't do it. And then I'd shoot that guy. And it was like, I, I, me and Jim thought it was the funny. We were like, wheeze laughing and doing this. And we put the video up and everybody was like, this sucks. Like, why would you do it? And I was like, oh, again, perspective and not thinking. And again, it was my job to play games. I'm playing games for at the time, you know, eight hours at my desk or whatever. Like this person could, that's their one hour to play that night. And they're excited yeah. about it. That sucks. But the flip now is like, you talked about Among Us. I love that so many developers have built games around that, right? Like when I think of Ultimate Chicken Horse, I think yeah. of how mad Nick makes me in that game by trolling <laughs> me. But again, that's friends playing together in a very specific way that having my experience ruined is the <laughs> game as he puts the atom bomb to blow up my thing or puts honey over here to get me punched by the punching bag. Oh man, it makes me think of Fall Guys, stuff like yeah. that. You know, yeah. everyone getting up, getting, everyone getting up on Team me. Yellow. Yeah, yeah, don't grab me at the end. If you do that, I will find you. Dude, Snow White Mike, he's, okay. he'll stop there and he runs defense no. and grabs people just to it's, screw with it's him. The it's the thing. He's so nice. Like, he how is, is so that nice. dude that's doing that? That's where he that lets people. it out. I don't know. It's scary. <sighs> it is, I feel like they're, I think that that's a part of some people's personalities too. It's like they don't have that in most parts of their lives and they're like, in games that's when they when they have that kind of they're role playing <laughs> yeah they're, they're yeah, RPing, really. being a troll yeah. um a couple of really quick stats on trolling and online harassment too that i want to i want to share with with you and the community and everybody thank you so much for for watching the stream today it's been awesome to have you in the chat participating with all of this uh more than 30 percent of online players and gamers have been uh, called offensive names uh been trolled or griefed around 34 percent or purposely embarrassed uh, or been embarrassed within a game. Uh, in terms of severe, severe harassment, 38% of players have had some point engaged in at least one severe form of harassment in online games. And for each type of severe behavior, around 20% of online players 
uh, and games have ever engaged in this behavior or to some degree and around seven percent of of folks within those spaces uh, have been in that position frequently I'm which is price that's so low yeah. it's an interesting space where you would think that folks would kind of be you know kind of actually trying to do their part and 34 percent or 35 percent does feel in comparison to the, the ideas that we already have kind of already had feels does feel pretty low yeah. uh which maybe is a good thing in, in the in the respect of more folks are playing with their friends which is one thing i think we've i know that there was a great piece of um, work done by dr kishana gray around you know voice in in, in chat on xbox live she has a fantastic book about about that um and how the move to when everyone put on party chat when party chat became a thing how a lot of that decreased because you weren't playing in public rooms anymore mm. uh and and how that kind of changed the the landscape and the way that we kind of do things in that space um yeah it's been it's been really interesting to have those conversations with, with folks like that as well um we're almost out of time for this week's episode uh any last thoughts on the topic of trolling from either of you anything that you want to share to the folks outside in chat land in twitch land in all the places that this show will go out and reside uh i'll, I'll let you go first greg on that one i think it's just taking everything we said to heart right and it's know your audience understand who you're trolling and what is your objective in trolling because with your friends obviously it can be a lot of fun obviously you can have a good time but are you going to cross that line let alone then think if you're going to go try to troll someone else that you don't know why what are you doing there what's the benefit of that like it's you know you talked about it earlier right of how you know bullies bully because they've been bullied or whatever but it's also the fact that so many people bully or troll because they just know that negativity gets the attention and i think it's so much uh better for everyone to go out there and be positive and then you know engage with positive people rather than worry about negativity being the thing that will actually get you to comment or talk to each other yeah alana last thoughts that was the the same thing i was going to say is like a plot yeah, that i feel like we maybe didn't <laughs> maybe <laughs> didn't cover is know your audience is uh you can troll um you know just just know who you're saying it to their familiarity with you like how they might read it i'm not gonna ever go to someone that i don't know and uh start trolling them as a person um, and I also think there is a big difference between harassment and trolling. Again, the language has changed there. Um, but harassing someone or doing something repeatedly uh, is beyond trolling. Even if you think it's a silly little joke, but if you're doing it over and over and over again, that becomes harassment. And you need to be careful of that kind of thing. And just know which people take which jokes which way and how they conduct themselves. And, and uh, I think we can all be a little bit better about how we react if we're called out for a joke going wrong. Is mm -hmm. um, not to say it was just a joke. Um, people aren't always right, you know, like if something upsets them, it doesn't necessarily mean they are right, but I don't see any downside in trying to make the most amount of people happy as possible. Yeah. And, and I'll leave with that, that similar thought of it's okay to say you were wrong. It's totally fine to take the L, put it on your phone forehead and walk away. And save it, totally save it. We're, what, in two weeks, we're back and we're talking about maturing in the spotlight. That's a huge, that's my whole talking point. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even get me started yet. Oh my goodness. Yes, we'll be back in two weeks. Uh, we do this show every two weeks. And again, thank you to the folks over at Cloud9 and the folks at Kaiser Permanente for, for having us host this. Everyone in the chat, thank you so much for being here. We'll see you back here in two weeks for more Presence of Mind. Uh, we'll see you very soon, and we'll be up out of here. Peace, peace.